All right, guys. Listen, we are um, excited uh, about what we're going to share with you today. And uh, we encourage you to get something to write on because today we're going to be sharing some information that you're going to want to write. Um, you know, because we believe here at the Harvest in giving you information that is going to uh, renew your mind and um, and help you in your life. We don't want to just give you anything. We want to want to be able to give you something you can take and chew on it and be able to utilize it in your life. And so we're going to ask you if you will. Go ahead and get something to write on because I'm telling you, it's going to be some meat today. All right. So listen, guys, we're going to pray so we can just invite coach in here. Um, Father, we thank you, first of all, for life, health, strength. We thank you, God, for who you are and all your glory. We welcome you, coach. We, we refer to the Holy Spirit as the coach because he teaches and he guides and instructs. And um, so we just refer to you today, God, and we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we give way to you. And we ask you to just use each one of us, these vessels known as David and Melissa. We ask you, God, to speak. We ask you, God, to talk. And uh, we surrender to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. We're on um, Be Hill. This is number seven. This is Be Hill number seven. If you've been being blessed by these teachings, just put some hearts up. If they, if they have been speaking to you and you have been able to apply them to your lives and you've been able to see transformation, then just put up some hearts. I mean, because I'm telling you, it's truly God. And we give him all the glory and we give him all the honor. But we know, you know, whenever he uses you to, to share his word and the word goes out, people's lives are changed if it's him doing the talking. And so we just thank God. So we're on Be Hill number seven and we're going to talk today about that stomach. <laughs> We're going to talk about that stomach and we're going to show you how it ties in to you being healed. But I just want to just kind of share some things with you first. Listen. The enemy cannot read our minds. Would you agree? I agree. Okay. He cannot read our minds, but he gathers all of his information by observation. Mm -hmm. mm. Somebody need to take that because somebody that's a that's a nugget right there for somebody. That's a nugget right there for somebody. In other words, someone is always watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Somebody's always watching. So he gathers his information by observation. He observes. And it's not him that's doing the observing. See, this one thing, you know what? People used to think that the devil was the one watching. Mm -hmm. No. You no. He only comes off the stoop for the important. Important yes. folk, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he sends his imps. Each one of us has an imp that he sends to watch and to see what it is that we're doing. And, you know, we did a teaching on this, uh, you know, last year, year before to just show you how it happens. He sends the imps out and the imps go back and report. And then, of course, they come up with a plan of action. All right. Um, and so he observes us. And so that's one of the reasons why First Peter 5, 8 says stay alert stay alert watch out for your great enemy the devil he prowls around he sends his imps and they prowl <clears throat> around like a roaring lion and it says looking so why is he looking because mm. he's observing he's observing he's observing to see how he can come at you all right, because that scripture says he's looking for someone to devour. He's looking at you. He's looking at your life. He's looking at how you respond to things, okay? And so we tell him about ourselves and how to best attack us, y'all. Somebody need to get this, by how we respond mm. to things. Mm -hmm. Wow. You need to remember that. You need to remember that. So we tell him how to attack us and how to come at us mm -hmm. by how we respond. And listen, most, most people, believe it or not, uh, ever have an encounter with the devil. Mm -hmm. It's always the encounter with his imps. Mm -hmm. um, if you're already doing things that uh, line up with what he wants, 
he doesn't have to attack you because he already feels like you're on his side. Mm. So he doesn't have to attack you. But for those of us that are trying to live right and trying to do right, he will show up when he's ready to try and claim you. Mm. Mm. Come on. Mm. He'll show up when it's time to lay claim mm. to that person. Mm. But other than that, mm. most of us, we never, ever have an encounter with him. Mm. With the devil. The devil. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Wow. That's good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. So, so, so listen, we're still on the subject of healing. So don't, don't, don't think we're not going to get there. We're going to get there. We're still on the subject of healing. And again, this is part seven in the series. So listen, go back to the previous teachings, one through six, because I'm telling you some nuggets in there that we're not going to be able to cover today. Um, and so this morning we're talking about the stomach. Mm. <laughs> We're talking about the stomach in regards to manifested healing. Now, don't nobody, don't nobody go, go nowhere. You know, you start talking about food and stomach, boy, <laughs> people start scattering. <laughs> and you're going to see why in just a second. All right. So listen, Philippians 319, Philippians 319, man, y'all need to get this, this particular scripture, write it down, highlight in your Bible. It says, their destiny is destruction. I'm reading from the NIV first. Their destiny is destruction. Their God, their God mm -hmm. is their stomach. Wow. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me read the living translation and then we'll go back and talk about it. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. Mm. Mm, we're going to break that down. Pastor mm. Mm -hmm. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. Mm -hmm. This is Philippians 319. So let's go back. All right. It's saying to you, you headed for destruction. Yes. If your stomach is your God. Mm -hmm. You headed for destruction if your stomach is your God. And then the last part of that tells you why your stomach might still be your God or is your God. It says <laughs> their mind mm. is set on earthly things. There it is, that mind. Mm. The heart of who we are. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> my, my, my. That mind. That mind. That unrenewed mind. That unrenewed mind, it, it says, if you go back, go backtrack. That unrenewed mind has a lot to do with you making your stomach a God. So, 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 so what you're telling me is that when I was diagnosed with diabetes, it possibly is a result that I uh, made my stomach a God. <laughs> is that, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And because I made it a God, I acquired type 2 mm, diabetes mm, mm. because my mind was focused on worldly things. Mm, oh, mm, my. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because, see, you already healed. I'm already healed. Because that's what the word says. Mm. It says, by Jesus' stripes, you are. Mm. So because of my unrenewed mind, I couldn't experience the healing that was already there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because okay. your 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 God, your stomach, mm. the one that you had made a God, you had already catered to it. Mm. So your decisions to cater to your stomach was hiding your healing. My, my, my. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that your healing wasn't there. <laughs> it's just your decision mm. to cater to your stomach. So my mind, which is my heart, mm. was being controlled mm. by my stomach. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. So so when you started to renew your mind mm -hmm. so that your mind was in line with what your spirit already knew, mm. then your mind told your brain to tell your body, no. No. <laughs> mm. My, my, my. <laughs> Man, <laughs> y'all listen, y'all better get this. Y'all listen, this y'all need to get this today. Y'all need to get this today. So renew your mind. Okay. If you know your, your stomach, you've made it a God. And I'm going to, you're going to find out in a minute if you have or not. If you've made your stomach a God, 
You've got to renew your mind. So Philippians 3.19 lets you know if you've made your stomach a God, then you're headed for destruction. Mm -hmm. And and of course, that apl that's applicable. That goes back to being healed because you're already healed, as Pastor DJ said. Mm -hmm. But it's hidden up under your decision to make your stomach a God. My, my, my. And I'm not just saying you. When I say that, I'm not talking about, because I, I'm, I, hey, I have to repent myself, okay? I have to repent myself. So when I say <clears throat> you, don't think I'm saying I've arrived, because, hey, I, I'm still there too, working on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a daily renewal of the mind. Amen. Daily renewal of the mind. All right. So listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. This, this, this is where we're excited today. <laughs> Y'all know whenever we start talking about stuff, we want to go back to the place of first mention, right? So let's go to Genesis third chapter. We're getting ready to show y'all some stuff today. Genesis third chapter. Now, we're going to, I'm going to put my specs on. Genesis third chapter. Now I'm going to read a few verses and then Pastor D and I are going to talk, talk to y'all about this. All right. Verse one, starting there. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it if you do, you will die. And that's from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then the enemy says, you won't die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took from or took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Oh, wow. Hmm. All right, y'all. <clears throat> it's some meat up in there. And we might not be able to get to all of it, but we're going to try. All right. So listen, first of all, Verse six, we, we, you, y'all, we know this story, so I don't have to go back and explain nothing, but verse six says she was convinced mm -hmm. that the forbidden food wouldn't harm her. That's right. Mm. After her conversation with the enemy, after him talking to her, telling her lies, she was convinced that the food that was forbidden wouldn't hurt her. Satan convinced her that we won't die. You won't die. You won't die if you eat the forbidden food. Okay? That's what he told Adam and Eve. And as I was reading that, as I was reading that, I wanted to just kind of look at what led up to her taking the fruit and giving it to her husband. Mm. And this is what we saw. It was pleasing to the eye, mm -hmm. and it looked delicious. And it looked delicious. Mm. <laughs> she was convinced that it wouldn't hurt her. Mm -hmm. mm. And Pastor D, it said she wanted wisdom. wisdom. My wow. God. <laughs> My God, we just did a teaching on wisdom last week, y'all. How many of y'all have read this passage of scripture a bazillion times and never saw mm -hmm. that particular section right there where it says she wanted wisdom? Yes. Come on, I need to see some hearts. How many of you have read that? You read everything around it, but you never stopped at that word, wisdom. That's right. It said she wanted wisdom. Mm. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> Y'all, listen. This is the first man and woman. They are created in God's image as we are also. But what's interesting about this is her desire for wisdom. It is built in us mm -hmm. to desire to be wise. We want to be wise. Nobody walks around here and says, I want to be stupid. That's right. No. That's right. We want to be wise, but mm -hmm. this is the kicker here. The enemy convinced her 
that she didn't have something that she already had. Mm -hmm. mm. Lord have mercy. My, my, my. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We were created. I'm going to say it one more time. We were <coughs> created in God's image and God is wisdom. So, of course, we desire to be wise. So, he convinced her that eating the forbidden food would give her something she didn't have. He told us she didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. When God had actually already given them mm. everything they needed inside of them, because before they sinned, the Holy Spirit was in them. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. So they had the mind of God in them already. Every bit of wisdom they needed was mm. in them already. Mm, mm, mm. And listen, and, and, and just like today, Christians, we can't allow the world to give us false information mm. on a subject that we already have the answers to on the inside of us. Mm. It's, it's just a matter of us sitting down mm. and being quiet, getting in his word and letting him speak. Mm -hmm. we, we spend more time speaking to him than listening to him. Amen. So if we would just sit down, listen, I just, <clears throat> listen, this is what I'm going to encourage y'all to do this week. Try it. Just try it. When you sit down to pray to God and read the word, take just as much time to sit there in silence mm. and be quiet and then say, speak, Lord, mm. speak, Holy Spirit. So listen, you know, and I'm, I'm always using myself as an example. So with type two diabetes, you know what? You shouldn't take in a lot of carbs, eat a lot of sweets. And so there are, there were times and, and still will be times from time to time, uh, you will have a piece of cake, a piece of pie and the Holy Spirit in you, because it has all the answers will say, Hey, David, you don't need that extra piece of pie because you already know what it's going to do to affect your blood sugar. But because if my mind is not renewed enough mm -hmm. and I'm catering to my stomach, mm. I'm catering to what my eyes see and what my tongue tastes. Mm. I will disregard mm. the truth mm. <laughs> to satisfy my flesh. Mm. I'm just saying we got to take responsibilities where we are in life. Mm. Come on. Again, because you already healed. Because you're already healed. <laughs> you already The healed. answer is already there. Mm -hmm. It's already there. My, my, my. Man. So, 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 and that's good stuff, Presty. That's good stuff. So, mm -hmm. so the enemy, we're going to get to the healing part. It's going to tie in. Y'all just wait a minute. So <laughs> the enemy convinced them that this one thing, this one thing mm -hmm. would make them feel complete. Wow. Wow. He said, God just don't want you to have it, mm -hmm. but they already had it. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit was in, them. was in them. But he said, <laughs> you need this one thing to make you feel complete. Mm. He made them think it would give them something they didn't have. Yes. Mm. My, my, my. So Eve wanted something she thought she didn't have, mm -hmm. but she went about getting it the world's way. My, my, my. Good. <laughs> My God, mm, mm, my mm, God, mm. my God. She went about getting <clears throat> it the world's way instead of God's way. Mm -hmm. Okay? So get wisdom, guys, but don't do it the world's way. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Do it God's way. Go through his word. Go through the word of God. All right, so there's some lessons in here. Man, there's some lessons in here, and I hope we can get to them. Everything that looks delicious... <laughs> Come on. Everything that looks delicious ain't good for you. My, my, my. You know what? They be running them advertisements on the on the, <clears throat> on the television. You know, those commercials where they got these burgers that's got like three burgers stacked on top of each other. Then you got cheese and then you got chili and then you got onion rings. Then they got one that's got french fries <laughs> on it and then bread on top and on the bottom. <laughs> then you got a special Thousand Island dressing or mm -hmm. Thousand Island sauce or something <clears throat> up in there that has tons of sugar and tons of salt, but they continue to commercialize it, continue to put it in front of you until your stomach says, mm, I want to try that. Mm -hmm. Knowing good and well, all that stuff can't be good for you. Come on. Mm -hmm. So everything that looks good, everything that's eye appeasing 
ain't good for you. It's not good Come for on, you. somebody. I need to see some hearts. Y'all can agree with me or not, but it's the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hmm. It's all right every now and then <clears throat> to partake in it, but if you partake in it on a consistent basis, man, hmm. you can't expect to, but to see a different manifestation than what God wants for you. Mm-hmm. And then you can't turn around and say, well, I guess it was God's will that I have diabetes. I guess it's God's will that I have blood pressure. No, no, (laughs) that Mm. is a lie from the pits of hell. All right. And look, Pastor, before you move on, uh, just a quick sidebar. I feel like I I need to say this. The scripture said that uh, Adam was standing there (laughs) with Eve. So men. We can't do what Adam did. We can't allow the enemy to walk up to our wives and convince them of something other than the truth. God has placed us to protect them and to lead them and show them the way. So when the enemy comes up, guys, we got to step up and be men Mm. and stop the devil in his tracks Mm -hmm. so that he can't convince our mates. To go against God's word. Mm, 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 mm. Just want to just want to throw mm. that in there. Man, that's a good piece of word right there. Because the covenant was with Adam. The covenant was with so, Adam. So 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 they didn't all the stuff that the devastation and the destruction, all that stuff didn't come until mm-hmm. Adam. Yes, and you know what? And I really believe a, a, an underlying issue is this: men blame women mm. for the state that we are in right now. Wow. But not so. We have to take responsibility mm, mm, for the part man played mm, in the fall. Because mm. see, what he should have said was, girl, woman, you you know what God said. You better <laughs> go get, get away from that put, tree. Put that, don't leave that, put that tree. But, that, but, that but, but you know what she said? You know what she said? She looked at Adam and she said, all, all of this. <laughs> <laughs> And so the lust of the eye, (laughs) the lust or the appetite of the eye. Oh, wow. Calls man (laughs) to trip and fall. (laughs) Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Jesus. So, so y'all look, well, y'all, y'all know us, y'all know us. But anyway, (laughs) so, so the lesson again, there's a lesson. Everything that looks delicious, mm, it ain't good for you. Come on. All right. Listen, he went through the stomachs. Of the first leaders to mm-hmm. destroy them. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to get this. I need y'all to get this. The enemy, as we just told y'all in the beginning, that's why we started out the way we started out. He cannot read your mind. He cannot read our minds, but he observes. Mm-hmm. Okay. In order to determine who you are, what makes your baby kick, what gets you upset, what makes you go off the handle and act in a way that's displeasing to God, he observes you. He observes us. His imps observe us. So these were the first humans based on scripture that he's ever encountered. Mm-hmm. So this is a learning. He's learning. He's yes. learning. Yes. Okay. His agenda, y'all, was to get them to sin against God. That was mm-hmm. his agenda because he knew that it was displeasing or would be displeasing if they did the opposite of what God asked them to do, mm-hmm. which was partake of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's so right. he was really, his goal, his agenda, Pastor D, come on. His goal was to get them to sin against God. Amen. But I believe, now, I, this is just what I believe. I believe because these were the first humans that he had encountered. He's learning. He's learning. He's, he's learning. He's learning. Yes. He's learning. So, so yes, he got them to sin against God, but I'm sure he was sitting there going, hmm. Yeah, aha moment. Aha. <laughs> that stomach. Wow. Wow. Mm. Mm, I might have something mm-hmm. here. I might have something here. So he went through the stomachs of the first leaders to destroy them. Mm -hmm. My God, y'all better catch Mm -hmm. this today. He went through the stomachs of the first leaders to kill them. Because the Bible lets us know God told them as soon as you partake of that forbidden tree, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. So he went through their stomach to kill them. And that's what he's doing today. Amen. He's going through our stomachs, y'all. Mm-hmm. He's going through our stomachs, and then he's sitting back and he's watching you destroy your own mm. self. My, my, my. He don't have to do nothing as long as he can convince you that what you're putting in your body ain't hurting you. Mm. 
goodness. So if you convinced that you keep eating like you eating, no, it ain't gonna do nothing. It's just food. It's just food. Then listen, <laughs> listen most people, most oh people God. are most ambassadors and kings and princes. They get sick by way of their stomach. Stomach. They are able to mm. get poisoned mm. by way of their stomach. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. He went through the stomach. And that's, again, what he does today. His mm -hmm. agenda is to get you to do his job for him. Yes. And he does that by convincing you mm. to make your stomach a god. Mm -hmm. Man. My, so my, when my. you make your stomach a god... You hide the healing that's there yes. because of the choices that you make. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we've been teaching. And that's one of the things we've gotten revelation of ourselves is what you put in your body is important. And when you go back to the place of first mention, we've already told you all this. God's original plan was for us to eat from the earth, the plants mm -hmm. and the fruit. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Satan mm -hmm. himself doesn't have to come and have an encounter with you. When you are already working for him. Mm, wow. My, my, my. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. So, so, so I don't believe the enemy knew the power of the stomach until that moment. Till that moment. Mm. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're going to show y'all something else in just a second too. So, you said, so his agenda was to just get them to sin against God, displease God. But I believe it was a moment of aha <laughs> for Satan, okay? He discovered the power of the human stomach. Mm -hmm. Man, 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 man. All right. So one of the things that he does, because one of the reasons that people become emotional eaters, we're going mm -hmm. to go back. She, she, Eve wanted wisdom, okay? Mm -hmm. She wanted something she thought would give her what she already had. Right. Okay. So when you are an emotional eater and I, and I'm raising my hand because that is something that I used to do emotionally eat, you know, whenever something would upset me instead of talking about it, mm -hmm. I would eat. Right. You know, I get angry. I'd eat. I'd hide food, you know, different things like that. And so if you are an emotional eater, you eat when you're angry. You eat when you're upset. You eat whenever things bother you because you just, you know, don't want to talk about it, refuse to talk about it, can't talk about it, whatever. And so when you see someone, and I'm just going to say this just from my years of just counseling people, when you see someone who is heavy or overweight, they have used food mm -hmm. to comfort themselves right. for whatever reason. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. okay? And so whenever you do that, you use food to make you feel mm. complete. Come on. You use food to make you feel better. Yes. You use food to soothe your pain. You use food to comfort you. You use food to give you something that you don't think you have already, mm -hmm. which is what happened with Eve and wisdom. Yes. Because she had in her already wisdom. God's Amen. wisdom. Amen. But she went after what Satan offered her because she thought it was going to make her feel. Mm. Mm. My, my, my. Mm. Y'all, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So if you are an emotional eater, you got to get to the root of it. Why? Why do you turn to food? What does it do for you? What does it do for you? How does it make you feel? Okay, because whenever you discover what that is, then it can help you become, you know, walk in your healing in that area. Because if you have Christ inside of you, Jesus help me, Holy Spirit. If you've got Christ inside of you, if you're already full of the Holy Spirit, my mm. God, if the Holy Spirit is already inside of you, attached to your spirit, you have everything inside of you that you need. Yes. You don't need food to make you feel whole. You don't need food to, to comfort you. You have the comforter himself. Mm, 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 mm. My God. Mm. My, oh my God, my God, my God. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. So he convinced them they needed food to feel whole. My, my, my. He started with Eve, mm. the woman. Yes. And then she enticed her husband. Mm -hmm. So women, there's a lesson there as well. There's a lesson there. We ain't got time to go into it, but pick that up and stew on it and, and, and taste it the rest of this week. Okay? That she turned around and offered it to her husband yes. knowing they weren't supposed to. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
knowing they weren't supposed to. She's supposed to be his help meet. Women, we're supposed to be their help meet. We're not supposed to do things or bring things to the table to destroy or bring down, you know, or to hinder or to bring destruction. Mm. A help meet is just that. <laughs> Amen. To help. Wow. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus. So, so again, mm, gosh, we got to... So again, he used food to make them feel complete, to soothe their pain. And then he sat back and watched. Mm. Wow. He sat back and watched. Mm. And that's what he's doing today. Right now. These commercials, I'm telling you, these commercials that come on television, you know what? It's strategically planned. Mm hmm it's strategically planned for you to indulge. And when you indulge and get addicted, I, I did this study. I, I did this study. And I think, I don't know if I shared it last week or not, but there was a study of some rats and they put rats in a cage. And before the study started, they gave them uh, a hit of cocaine and a hit of sugar water. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the study, they discovered that these rats got more addicted to the sugar. They didn't even go back to the cocaine. Mm -hmm. That's right. They were more addicted to the sugar than they were the cocaine. Mm. And that is how the, the, the world is operating now. Everything has so much sugar in it. Well, if you get addicted to sugar, that means you're eating a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. And when you eat a lot of sugar, it affects how your body produces insulin. And also, there's a lot of salt. So if you eat a lot of salt, salt affects high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things that are being used to draw us in. And we mm -hmm. catch a hold to that bait. And before you know it, we're caught. That's right. And it affects our bodies. The one thing you see more of on a daily basis are advertisements about food. Food. It's on every corner, on every billboard, mm -hmm. every radio station, mm -hmm. all over the TV. Mm -hmm. People are talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All every day. Mm -hmm. you, pass, you pass the fast food store. And the line is all the way around the building. Mm -hmm. People buying burgers and chicken. Well, what was that sandwich that came out? <laughs> that sandwich that came out? Uh, the Popeye's chicken yeah, sandwich. Yeah, people were in line for, for, I mean. Miles. Miles for a sandwich. For a sandwich. Could you imagine what the world <laughs> would look like if people were lined up oh my God. at church oh my God. that same way? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh my mm, God, mm, my mm. God. You you know what? You're exactly right. You're Man. exactly right. And there's a church on just about every, every corner. corner. So there's no excuse. <laughs> oh my gosh. My goodness. Oh my gosh. Well, listen, y'all. Listen, I, I gotta get this in here. I gotta get this in here. So we just told y'all how the enemy uses food. We just told y'all how he used food in the beginning, in, in the book of Genesis, the very pl first place, the place of first mention. But we got to understand his strategy. We got to understand why. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. 1 Corinthians 6, mm, 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 19 through 20. Man, I was going to say, y'all there? Like they were going to answer. I don't know what <laughs> <the> word. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it says, Whew. Don't you realize, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who what lives in you and was given to you by God. Mm. You do not belong to yourself. Come on. For God bought you with a high price. Yes. So you must honor God with your body. body. If you are not taking care of your body, if you're putting any and everything in it, if you've made your stomach a God, mm. my God, Come my on. God, then you're not honoring God. Mm. You're not. Listen, listen, the enemy's whole purpose for getting you to believe or be convinced that you, um, the food you're eating won't hurt you is because once this body of yours gets a disease or once it can't function like it needs to, then 
the temple, which is what God refers to you as, mm -hmm. this temple can't be used as effectively yes. by the Holy Spirit. Because if you sick and you can't get around, then the Holy Spirit can't do what he needs to do through you. Amen. Because this is the vehicle. Come on. By which he gets around yes. in you. Yes. This is the vehicle by which your spirit man gets around in. So if it's sick and it can't do, if you're on the bed all the time, if you're fighting diabetes or fighting high blood pressure mm -hmm. and it has you in a place where you can't function, this flesh can't function, then that limits what the spirit can do through Amen. the body. Amen. And the enemy knows that. That's why he's trying his best. To cause you to or convince you that what you're doing to your body can't hurt you. Mm. Or that what you're doing to your body is okay. Because what he's doing is he is causing you to continue to stay in a state mm -hmm. with this body. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit can't use you like he wants to. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Mm. You can have that extra piece of cake. Just take a mm. pill afterwards. Mm. That's exactly what he said. It'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. It'll yeah, be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Go ahead and eat that extra slice of pie because mm. we can exercise a little bit next <laughs> week and, and it'll be okay. And next week don't even come because you don't week exercise. Next never shows up. Mm. Yeah, that's what he does. Mm, mm, mm. That's what he does. That is exactly what he does. Mm. And he'll say to you, you know what? Mm. You probably could get rid of this diabetes if you just eat right and exercise, but just take them pills. Just take those pills. Take them pills. Yeah. And, and, and you know, when you take the pills, if you know anything about side effects, when you read the, the pamphlet that comes with it, look, you own the pill for that particular thing, but then there's a multiplicity of side effects that mm -hmm. come along board and attach themselves or can attach themselves to you. Mm -hmm. So that's why he wants you to stay on the pill because there are other side effects that are going to come to make you even sicker. Then you mm -hmm. got to get on another pill for the side effects, the side then effects. the other side effects for that pill. So come before on. you know it, you're on 10, 12, 15 pills for the one thing you went to the doctor for in the first place. <laughs> And that's what he loves for you to do. Instead of backing up off of food, exercising, losing some weight, and be healthy and, of course, see your healing manifest that's already there. And look, but the, here's the thing about this. Man, Jesus. In that entire process, the enemy doesn't have to lift his hand. To do nothing. because you You're do doing the work for him. <laughs> my, 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 my. God, doing the Jesus. work for him. We give him way too oh, much credit. Oh, man. Oh, my way God. Way too much credit. Oh, my God. Oh, my mm. God. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. We're giving him too much, too much credit. credit. We doing it to ourselves. To ourselves. All he's doing is whispering so that you will be convinced. Mm -hmm. And then he sits back, crosses his arms, and watch and you watches. destruct. Amen. Watch you destruct. Yeah. That's what he does. He's not going to come after you until he sees that you have figured out mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit within you mm -hmm. is greater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when he lifts his hands because now he's trying to convince you that because you're doing the right thing, you're actually doing the wrong thing. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? When he sits back and he's got his hands crossed and he's watching you destruct, self-destruct, oh, he takes he takes mm -hmm. it whenever you say the devil did it or, mm -hmm. or, or gives him credit. Oh, yes. he loves that. He cleans. But he's sitting there going, I ain't done nothing but convince you that uh, <laughs> what you're doing is okay. Mm -hmm. That's, That's all it. he's done. That's all he's done. He's just convinced you. Just like he did with Eve, mm. all right? So this is the last thing, man, y'all. We got we got to go. We got to go. Mm. Mm. Just to show you, <laughs> just to show you the strategy, just to show you how he works. Now, we told you he went to Adam and Eve through the stomach, right? Well, to show you that that is the angle that he understands is the most powerful because he used that with Adam and Eve and it worked, man. He used it with Jesus as well. If you go to Matthew, fourth chapter, when Jesus was out in the wilderness, it says, then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became hungry. So verse three, during the time the devil, or during that time the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, Tell these stones to become loaves of bread. What was the first thing mm. he went at Jesus with? 
his mm. stomach. He went after his stomach. He went after his stomach. Mm. Mm. He mm. didn't mm. go after the power first. Nope. He didn't go after the notoriety first. Nope. He went through the stomach. That's through what he stomach. was trying because he knew it worked with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And my with my other mind. leaders who had come along after them. That's good stuff. So the <laughs> first thing he did was he went towards Jesus' stomach. Mm. My, my, my. But Jesus passed the test. Yes, so that is. lets me know if you can pass the stomach test, mm. you can pass anything. Come on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if you can pass the stomach test, you can pass anything. Mm. So he knows that if he goes there first, mm -hmm. that's the one thing that's surely going to trip you mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Because if he thought power and notoriety would do it, he'd have, he'd have used those first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, Jesus. We understand. <laughs> we understand as humans that we have to have food to live. Yes. So we, we get that. Yes. We understand that. But you can't make it a God. But you can't make it a God. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. You know, I just wonder. This, this just thought came through my head. Because, see, Scripture lets us know... <clears throat> Then he came at him, you know, for, uh, came at his stomach first. But we just read a scripture in the very beginning where it said, listen, 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 let me get here. Where it says, they are headed for destruction. Philippians 3.19. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. That is what the living translation refers to it as. Mm -hmm. Why well, appetite consists of really three things. Three things. Yes. It consists of food. Mm -hmm. It consists of water. And sex. Amen. That's right. So, even for a man, if you were hungry mm -hmm. and you had the option to take food or sex, <laughs> <laughs> that's just a question that popped in my mind. That popped in my head. If you really hungry and you knew you don't have but one choice. <laughs> <laughs> with you. <laughs> you women we know we pick food but, <laughs> but if you had one choice one choice one choice you know but I mean it's just amazing how powerful yes and that's why folk fight fasting mm -hmm. they don't want to fast yep, we'll choose food first. You, you, you don't want to take 21 days and give up food, food. that's right man even when we do the Daniel fast, you mm -hmm. know, you we, it's not like we're taking away food completely. You still getting to eat, but you don't want to do it for 21 days because you don't want to give up the stuff you love. Amen. Mm. That's right. Man. All right, y'all. We got we to gotta stop this. Man, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Listen, if this blessed y'all today, we need y'all to just let us know. If this spoke to you today, if your baby was kicking, hey, put up some hearts. If your baby kicked today, uh, we would love to know. And uh, please share this because you just never know who um, it will bless. You just never know. And so if you're on here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're not, you know, um, connected to him, if you're not born again, listen, it's so simple. You got to first of, first of all, believe, okay? Just saying the words doesn't do anything. You got to believe in who he is. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is who the Bible says he is, then just simply invite him into your heart. Simply just welcome him. Just say, Jesus, I believe in who you are. I believe in who the word says you are. And I invite you to be my Lord. I welcome you into my heart. And I thank you for transforming me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that short, simple prayer, but more importantly, if you believed it, hey, then the Bible says you're born again. And when you leave this side of glory, your destination is going to be with the Lord. And so we encourage you to, um, you know, inbox us, message us, go to our website, email us, whatever. So we'll know and we can pray for you and cover you. And this year, um, and I'm going to say sooner than later, I know we're going to be back in the building. Can't wait to get back in the building. We would love to have you join us. And uh, of course, until then, join us here at 11 o'clock every Sunday and Bible app on Wednesdays. And so much love to you guys. Thank you for joining and please share. And also listen. When you get off of here, go to the church's Facebook page and invite your friends to like the page. That way they'll be able to get notifications when we go live. Um, and that helps us get the word out more. So please do that for us. If this fed you today, do that for us, okay? So much love. Y'all have a blessed and prosperous day. Have a good day. Good day. Bye.
拜。